Jay here again, and this is episode 10 now of Exploring the North Shore. We did take a week off last week, long story there, but back now, but I am not back with Joe, actually. I am here with someone else. Would you introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is Lizanne. Um, I am a travel blogger, actually located in the Twin Cities. Um, I love featuring all local travel, especially in Minnesota, and I'm here with Jay today to kind of do a tour of Grand Ray, yeah. one of my favorite places ever in Minnesota. <laughs> and you said this is your ninth time coming. This up. is my ninth time coming up. Every time it get, ugh, just every time it gets better. And my boyfriend and I literally count down the days coming here, and we look forward to it every year, all the time. And I'm always trying to get one more trip, one more trip every year. So. It's been, this is the second trip this year. Hopefully I can round out for a third one by the end of the year. Nice. Yeah, yeah which is interesting up here. It is, but <laughs> it's still it's still pretty in its own sense. I do love winter, so don't knock it, but it's definitely a little bit different, but beautiful as well. Well, Joe is busy doing some things right now, so he will not be joining us for this episode. It is going to be you and I doing a girls' day in Grand Marais. Yes. And we're going to do a bunch of not overly girly things, but no, something for somewhat. everyone. What? In fact, today's agenda includes some meals at some restaurants, and we're also going to be going to North House to make a timber frame structure. So excited! So you know, not. I mean, if you're sitting there about to turn it off because you're like, oh, I don't want to hear them like, I don't shop for jewelry. Don't worry. That will also happen, but <laughs> we're going to be doing some other fun things. So we're going to, be going to the North House, shopping a little bit around town, and just exploring a little bit for a day in Grand Marais. This is Exploring the North Shore with Lizanne and Jay. All right, so we are at south of the border. And have you been here before? I have not been here before. Okay. So this place is, it's really affordable. It's kind of more a typical like American. No, it says south of the border. And people yeah. are like, oh, does that mean it's Mexican? I totally thought that. We're talking south of the Canadian border, which uh -huh. is America. <laughs> That's so it's, funny. Oh it's my gosh. It's hilariously clever, actually. Because yeah, even I thought that when I first moved here, I was like, oh, it's south of the border. They have a Mexican place like right, right? across from another Mexican place. I know, place. right? <laughs> that seems a little interesting. And then I came in, I'm like, oh, never mind. I get it south of the border. That's is awesome. American. So there's very traditional American fare. It's really affordable, which is nice. Yeah. The catches with here, they don't take credit card. It's check or cash only. Perfect. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I get so many options. What's your favorite? Um, I actually really like the French toast here. Mm. It's pretty good. Also, and then there's the um, the Sportos muffin. It's kind of there. Thank you. Thank you. She'll need a minute. Yeah. Thank you. Potatoes are really good. What? The potatoes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've never actually eaten lunch here. Every time I come, it's always like, yeah, you need breakfast. I feel like any place that opens early for breakfast, like, I only eat breakfast there. Yeah. You know what I mean? She looks like mom. I'm like, when I get lunch, I'm just going to get breakfast all the time. You're going to do the French toast? I'm actually going to do the. Um, <laughs> three French toast so with bacon. That's, I, just, I get the same thing every time. Mm. I'm so. I'm like that too, though. Once I find something I love, yeah. it's hard to change me. I don't, I don't eat food like that a whole lot anymore. So yeah, we don't get out. I have too many kids. How many kids do you have? Three. Oh my goodness. How old? Two, four, and six. Mm. Yeah, so young. We don't. That's fine. Actually, this is a great place to come with kids because we sit back here and they can just run around yeah, in here and true. don't bother everybody else in the restaurant. So it's, it's you know, I like this place. It's casual. <laughs> totally. And this is where a lot of people have their clothes <coughs> and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. It's a fun place. I like it. Awesome. <laughs> well, no, nope. it's gonna force me to order something. Okay, I can go. And then you can go for like another thirty seconds. Yes. I will take the three French toast with bacon. Okay. Uh, no, actually, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do the two eggs and fried potatoes, um, and I'll do it with. What do you like better? Bacon. Our bacon is really good. Bacon it is. <laughs> How do you want your eggs? Are? Um, can I do them over easy? Yes. Thank you. Um, white toast, sweet toast, pancake. 
she was um I'll do a wheat toast. Two okay. years ago, was, she was there for a chance. Perfect. Yeah. Anderson is out. All right, so you got a very traditional American breakfast there: oh, eggs, wedding. potatoes, bacon. toast and bacon. Oh, yes. What do you think? It is perfect. Exactly what I need. To start the day. Good morning. Yes. Exactly. Get you ready for some timber framing. <laughs> yes. The potatoes are fabulous. And the French toast, as always, delicious. Mm -mm. All right. So next time you hear from us. We are going to be at the North House Folk School. Very. Woo! Very. All right, so we just had breakfast at South of the Border, and now we are at North House Folk School. Isn't it cute? So adorable. The space is great. And today we're going to be doing a Try It Timber Framing class, which is actually a free class. Awesome. You know, budget friendly and yeah. Have you ever done timber framing? I've never done it. I've never even heard about it until today. I'm actually super intrigued and excited. All right, let's go check it out. Yay. Really counting. Uh, so I think, yeah, maybe I'll introduce myself a little bit more. I'm, uh, like I said, we're interns. We're here for 10 months. We do all these different things. I did construction before this. I've done some woodworking, but like a lot of you guys, I had never dealt with anything uh, timber framing wise. And then I came here and it was this huge thing. And there, up here, there are a, a couple of kind of masters of the craft. And uh, this is one of those places that a lot of people come to if they're interested in timber framing, just because there is so much of it. What, looking around, obviously, I guess right now, there, you can see a number of timber frame structures, but it's almost kind of like low at the moment because we used to have a couple more right here. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of timber framing around here. And you, you can drive up the shore and you'll see timber frame churches and whatnot, which is all coming over from the Scandinavian tradition. Uh, but all over the world, uh, Scandinavia, Russia, Japan, all these northern countries with these really uh, long, strong, thick timbers, really common, different iterations of the same style. So I was going to show you something on the table. We had a class that was eight days long. Literally uh, up the street, the lumber mill dropped off like, gosh, probably 10 or 15 logs. You know, the diameter was roughly 10 inches. And then they all had um, either brought or had access to these long beard axes with a handle. This one is just a demonstration axe. And all day long for like six days, these guys are like bent over these round logs and they're hacking them off uh, slowly making them into um, these shapes. Uh, it was funny, I was reading all the evaluations from that class and one person even put, I wish the class was nine days so we could go out into the field and see how to pick the trees that we picked. So they, they didn't get sick of it, they wanted more. The, um, there are buildings that are built like this that are you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and even getting into thousands of years old. Really, really stable, really, really strong structures. Basically what we're doing is we're looking at what I can only describe as Ikea-like <laughs> instructions, instructions. <Yes>. <laughs> for <laughs> a timber frame <laughs> structure, small little eight foot structure, but um, small but challenging. Challenging. So, okay, wait, so this one is this one because it's slightly got yes. the back, so the back yep. doesn't have a bend to it? So the back one is this one. Okay. and. That piece? Is that this? No, that's that one. Okay. Yeah. And so I think we're going to get the like the knee braces and get those in there. Those right there. Yes. So let's start with those. Okay. Okay. See one. Oh, they're so much further along than us. Know, <laughs> it's okay. We're outnumbered here. We're fine. I know. <laughs> and I'm not really <laughs> helping because I'm recording. Which one is this? Well, this is C1 post and none of those go in there. No, that, 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 this isn't C1 post, that goes into C1 post. Right? That's what that means? So which one's C1 post? But then, this right is... Right here on the side, I believe. Is that Except one right there? Two yeah, so this is two, right? This whole wall is C. Yeah. And this bend is two, and this bend is one. So this so is... So if we have one C, that's going to be the post right here. Which is this one. Which is this one, yep. So that one needs to move back. We're getting it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Feel free Th this goes right here, right? Yep. So you take, you take that and, and you slide it in there. 
That looks good. Hey, I put a piece together. Hello. And then we need the top piece, which is behind me. And then that goes in there. Yep. But wait. And all the joiners can have to go together at one time. Okay. Yeah, this will come. So descriptive, we've got two side posts, one top. We're connecting them with two braces. And the moment of let's assemble it all is coming up. So everybody push at the same time. All right, look at that. Nice. And now we start shoving stuff into these holes. Yeah. <laughs> So cool. at this point, we're done with our part here. Now we're just waiting yeah. for... So now we can lift these two walls up. Oh, okay. Yep. And then we can build the fence on top of it. Look at guys, we built a wall. <laughs> the hard part's over? Just kidding. The hard part's just Oh gosh, over. I feel like the... It's not really a roof, but the upper part. What yeah. is that, what would that be called? I don't even know. <gasps> Ooh. Everybody Good all right. catch. <laughs> There's a little bit of a breeze today. We just lost our wall. <laughs> Maybe just hold it. All right, look over here. Okay, working hard. Yeah, Holding yeah, walls. I'm the support beam. <laughs> <laughs> you got it? I got it. I got it. Yeah. Are you okay? It kind of hit you. Yeah, it caught me good. Yeah. I think we need to get these guys in first. Yeah, this is going to be a part of No, she caught it. She like leaped forward and you tried to grabbed it. <laughs> it fell on him, not me. So I can't. Are you all right? Oh. So how do you feel your timber framing construction? I feel like I'm an expert now. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, that was fun. I can see now how I've always wondered people buy those kits where they come like that and you oh, put them yeah. together. I'm like, how does that work? And now I, now you know. I understand. I could totally buy a kit and pull that off. I feel with like 10 other people. 10 other people. Forget it when I buy it. So we've assembled the timber frame and now we're taking it apart, which it's coming apart a lot better than it went up. <laughs> Once again, you're a post. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> and just like that, it took us about a minute. It took about 15 minutes to assemble and a minute to take it apart. Well done. Okay, so we've now finished the class. <laughs> we built an eight foot tall timber structure in about 50 minutes and then took it down in less than two. This is a quick, quick build. But it was fun. It was definitely fun. I'm not gonna get too into it, but I will say you can take classes here. There's paid classes, there's the free try it classes, there's like nighttime community type classes where you can just come in off the street or there, you know, most of them you have to register for. So check out their website. I think it's uh, Nor it's North How I don't know the website. Google North House Folk School <laughs> and click on, it'll come up. Click on whichever <laughs> one is in grammar that comes out. I doubt there's any other North House Folk Schools, but yeah, we're standing here in the middle. We're surrounded by some beautiful buildings. It just it's colorful. That's what I love about it too. They have the red building, the yellow building, the blue building. Then they have kind of the raw wood sided buildings Definitely. to make it look really cool there's and historic. So much, yeah, there's so much character here. It's just absolutely gorgeous. What you heard a little bit earlier from our instructor Ian was just kind of how they built some of these things and the different methods and the different like cultures that they pulled a lot of these things from. So it was really cool. There's a lot of influence from all over the world here. And yeah, we did it. It was awesome. I learned so much more than I ever thought I would. Um, and just even walking around the property and seeing the different kind of timber frames that they even have on property was just eye-opening and really cool. It's not just building timber frames and it's not just building, it's not just woodwork. There's cooking, there's um, herbalism, there's arts and crafts, not arts and crafts, but like leather work and um, sewing and all sorts of fun stuff, sausage making. Yeah, there's really something for everyone. And it uses all like really 
I would say old school, but traditional methods. Yes. So check out their website. Check this place out. We will be back for a North House Folk School specific episode. This was just kind of a fun little girls night thing. Girls day thing. <laughs> um, but now we're going to move on. Let's go. Woo! So as you know, our podcast is sponsored by Cascade Vacation Rentals. And Lizanne, you are actually staying at one of the rentals right now. Would you tell us about it? Yes. So I am actually staying at the Grand Marais House of Light. Um, it is this beautiful little blue house um, a few blocks up from the main drag. It is absolutely stunning. You can just tell the love and detail that was put in when this house was made. Um, and yeah, just walking into it immediately, my boyfriend and I felt a sense of calmness and relaxation. And it was just the perfect place to lay your head for the weekend in Grand Marais. And I'm so excited to stay there the rest of the weekend. So if you would like to stay at Grand Marais House of Light or any of the other 175 vacation rentals offered from Cascade Vacation Rentals, go online to www.cascadevacationrentals.com and be sure you use the promo code podcast. Again, the discount off their changes regularly, but it will always be our biggest discount available at any given time. So again, that's www.cascadevacationrentals.com, promo code podcast. Oh, and it's lunchtime. We are at Sister's Place. And you have been here, but you, well, you've never eaten in the restaurant before, have you? No, I don't think we have. We usually just do takeout pizza. So that's a possibility, but you ordered the Juicy Lucy. I ordered the Juicy Lucy to try. I'm very excited. I am definitely a burger girl, so. And we'll see if it's better than, which was the one you liked again? I'm sorry. Um, the Nook. The Nook. In St. Paul, yes. So we'll put it to the chest. Yeah, the Nook. The Nook's like listening. They're like, it better not be. <laughs> Um, Nook is a favorite, yes, so I'm excited to try this one. Definitely a very um, full of character restaurant here. Yes. Lots of, actually, if you, if you spend some time walking around, there's some very interesting artifacts in this actual you know, like, restaurant, but a good place to have lunch. It's off the main drag, so I think, well, it's always really busy, so it's yeah. not like not being on the main drag to right. hurt them, but it's right. not something you would see if you just went downtown. True. So, we're going to have lunch. Be back later. Awesome. All right, Lizanne, you got your Juicy Lucy. I did. And? It was good. Is it city's good? <laughs> it is a Grain Marie good. <laughs> but that's saying something because I've had Juicy Lucy's a lot of places and they don't even come close to this. So there we go. Good. It's very good. So if you're a Juicy Lucy fan, would you recommend it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Definitely. And my kimchi hot dog is delicious as always. It looks really good, too. There's a... A certain palette they can appreciate kimchi, but if you're among that, I recommend it. Not my palette, but it does look good. <laughs> <laughs> they made it very pretty. Yes. Until I destroyed it with my fork. <laughs> Alright, well that was lunch. I think we should go shopping. I think so too. <laughs> I am Jill Terrell. This is my store, Joy & Company, which I started late in 2010. And we have kind of an eclectic mix. We have antiques, we have locally and regionally made products, and then we have art supplies. All right, and why'd you start it? What was the inspiration? Um, I have always been a maker, and uh, there are so many people in the community who wanted to tiptoe their way into that world. And so this was kind of a way to help that happen. One of our mission statements is supplemental income for residents of Cook County. So a lot of our people have never sold before. So one of the things we do is help them figure out, you know, how do I price? How many do I make? How do I market it? All of that kind of stuff. Um, and I just, I think that making is, everybody has a maker inside of them. It's good for the soul whether 
We talk a lot about it's the process, not the end product. Mm -hmm. And it's the process of making something that's magical. Mm -hmm. And everybody should have access to that. And so that's kind of what we try to do is, is unleash that for people. So we started with 12 makers. Now we have over 130. I was going to wow. ask you that because it's yeah. like every that's time amazing. I come in here, there's something it new. It changes all the time. And you know, some people try it and say, oh, this isn't really how I want to spend my time. Other people have developed into quite a nice little business. So it's the full range. Yeah. Yeah. And who are some of the makers you've had in here the longest? Some of my early ones. Um, Mary Jo Flack was one of my original ones. She lives in Hovland and she has a whole little corner. She does a lot of upcy upcycling and, and, and things as well. Like she'll get things at the recycling center and she has these little um, gnomes that she makes or leather jewelry from old leather jackets and stuff like that. Um, Bonsai Wubin is from Thunder Bay and she's been with me since the beginning. She's got a really um, fun aesthetic to her stuff. I have to think <laughs> about who else. That's a lot of people to flip through in my brain. Yeah. Um, Jewelry makers, uh, Nancy harmeyer has been with us a long time. Mm -hmm. Gail Anderson has been selling her rock lamps here for oh, years. Oh, wow. So, That's yeah. Awesome. That's fun. Mm -hmm. I, I just love coming in here. And, and it's an excuse because I, I, art supplies are my drug of choice. Uh -huh. And so I need to know about all the different art supplies. So right. I need to own something of everything that comes through here and have had some experience with it. So uh, I get to try new things all the time, which just makes me happy. <laughs> well, she got very excited about your uh, gel pen collection. Yes. I know. Did, Did you see the new that? ones? The oh, no. shadow. What? There's a new one out and it's like a, a purple color, but then it shadows gold or silver oh, my around goodness. the edge. I know. Definitely going to take one of those <laughs> home with me. <laughs> Good. Good. Oh, those are awesome. Yeah. And so you said you have regular turnover, or at least it's kind of yeah. a I have, little ebb and flow. Mm -hmm. um, I have some people, especially from out of town, that maybe want to kind of figure out how it works. And then we make some suggestions maybe closer to home for them mm -hmm. as a place to sell. Okay. Because our... our we want to weight it towards Cook County residents, mm. but we haven't turned anybody away. But sometimes we kind of take them on as a six month to a year thing and then let them find something right. closer to home. Cool. So even so, if someone was here a year ago, they should definitely come back. Yes, it changes. It changes almost daily. So between the antiques and uh, the things that people bring us. And then this building has some history too. It does. This is the old Lynn Chevrolet building. It goes back to the 1920s. Um, and this back in this space was where they originally sold, uh, worked on the cars. The old car lift is under my stage. We didn't want to pull the cylinders, so we, we built a stage over it. Body shop was on that side of the wall, which the new, was the newest addition. And at the front of the building where upstate Minnesota is, is where they would sell the cars. So when you come in my front door, the ramp comes down, but it also goes up to the side. And one of our vendors is actually Bruce Footer. He's a carver. And this was his family's building going back from when it was first started to when his parents ran it as like Superior Collectibles starting in 1988. And then, um, uh, and then it was empty for a little while and then we started building it back up. And we renovated it in three different waves, so it's pretty solid. And we're yeah. here year round. And yeah. and then I, I, my every time I come in here, I have to flashback, flashback to my childhood with that right there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> isn't that fun? <laughs> we have the old stools from Lang Soda Fountain, which we're very thrilled to have. It brings back memories for many, many people. The counter is from Mabel's Cafe, which was a restaurant a few doors down from us. And uh, I've heard Mabel was quite the taskmaster. A lot of people, that was their first job and she taught them how to do it right, is what I'm told. That's awesome. Yeah, and we love having some of those bits of history. We also have one of the old Lang soda fountain signs yeah. in the back. And near the front door, we've got one of the Gunflint Trail bears that was in front of the library. One oh, was yeah, blown down yeah. in a storm and they replaced it. And we got this one on its way to the dump. We oh saved it. Oh my gosh. So yeah, we love having the history and feel. Grand Marais is a place that families have been coming to for generations. Mm -hmm. And so it's really nice to have 
to honor that history with I what we do here. This place is both a store and kind of a museum in one. It is, yeah. and we love that. We love that. And we, you know, we like people to come and we try to unleash joy every day. That's part of our mission. That. And so we have, you know, we have bins of chalk around. We invite the kids to leave art on our floor. We've got a backyard where they can hang out. We've mm -hmm. got the antiques. We've got a vintage vinyl room where a lot of the men will just park for a few hours. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we try to make it an experience, whether you're buying or just coming through, that it's something you do together. Yeah. So. I love that. That's part of our vision. So <laughs> how do you, with the antique part, mm -hmm. how do you get your antiques? Like, do you, do people bring them here? Do you go source them out? Like, My, I kind of have two collection? business models okay. to going. The, the antique vendors rent a space. Mm -hmm. And then, so their main, their main investment is their monthly rent. And then we get a small commission on okay. their sales. And that allows them to barter with people, mm -hmm. which is more the way that business works. Mm. So they've got room to, you know, take offers if offers are made. Right. Um, all of my artisans are on a straight commission basis. Mm -hmm. So there's one rate for Cook County and another one that's a little bit higher for out of Cook County. Okay. So there's no work requirement. There's no rent for those people. It's just you bring us your stuff as things sell. Mm -hmm. um, it's deposited into your bank, technically, is what in the computer. And then at the end of the month, I write checks and send them out by the fifth of the month to anybody who sold the previous month. Awesome. So we've got a great system that yeah. keeps it really clean and organized. And that allows us, you know, to take two things from somebody and have 2,000 from right. somebody else. Right. And it's all just flows through really nicely. That's very nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So all right. pick one thing in the entire <gasps> store. What's your favorite? Oh, my goodness. One thing. Can it be art supplies or does it have to be more specific? <laughs> if it's like a art supply, it has to be one specific one. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Okay, the Whispering Pines Motel sign. Oh. I love that. I just turned around and saw that. Yeah, that's from down by Ilgen City. Long before I thought about this place and started the process, my mother and father-in-law pulled that out of the woods for me for a Christmas present. They had permission from the people. And uh, they went back in the woods and hauled it out and oh, gave goodness. it to me for Christmas. That's special. So, it, yeah. That's really special. Yeah. Yeah. It is pretty That's, special. Yeah. Good choice. Good choice. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Whew, pass that one. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing um, that I think is kind of an important, cool part of our story is that um, the Joy and Company comes, uh, it goes back quite a ways. I had a friend whose last journal entry was... Um, Joy is a decision. And she was unexpectedly killed in a car accident with her husband and young daughter. And it was just a, a life changing moment that became a life motto for me right there. And I've worked to fulfill that. And this is what it's eventually evolved into. So um, her, her spirit yeah, is yeah. here as well. And it was that, you know, Joy is a decision. It's, mm -hmm. it's it's what you make of it every day. And so, you know, we talk about, we try to unleash that for people when they come through the door. So, I love that. That's beautiful. So, yeah. <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're going to shop a little bit. Yeah. Feel I, free. Let us know if we can help you with anything. All right. We'll do. All right. Thank you so Thank much. You so I much. appreciate it. Thank you for talking with us. You so. bet. Anytime. Um, yeah, my name is Gwen Danfelt. We're at Drury Lane Books in Grand Marais. I run the bookstore. I don't own it. It's owned by Joan Drury. She lives in Lutzen and she had a whole career in books. She's a published author. Wow. She was a, she had a little printing press for women writers. She ran a writer's retreat on Lake Superior for years. She was an editor and then when she retired from all of that, she um, bought this historic house and wanted a little bookstore. And so we've been here since 2002. Okay. That's awesome. An interesting follow-up question to what you just said. What was the house before? Was it just a private home? Was it a specific person's home? It's been a lot of... It's been Sievertson's Gallery, oh, if you can imagine. Right. Sievertson's being much smaller. <laughs> it was a candy store. It was a gift shop. That goes back to like the 60s, but it was built in 1905 as a home. Like a... Yeah, so... Can you imagine living in this? And it probably didn't have running water. Because you can tell that some of the plumbing and stuff was added after the fact. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, they had a great view. 
Yes. I, I, this good. is my favorite location in all of Grand Marais. Just the specific like spot. Yeah. It's got a good vibe That's to it. Very nice. Thank and you've you got the nicest beach. So yes. Yes. <laughs> And the best books. And the yes. best books. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm working on every day is curating the best books. So oh, what God. kind of books? Um we do all new books. Um, we, of course, have a lot of local, regional books. That's what a lot of times visitors are looking for. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, Joan's goal was excellence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she had a whole career in that. books. And um, so she had a lot of her, her, a lot of her favorites, both fiction and nonfiction. Um, and, of course, the new books that people are looking for, we'll, we'll carry those too. But really, we just want to have a collection of really excellent books in all genres. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. And what are some of the local authors that you've, have books for in here. Um, William Kent Kruger is probably the most popular. I was just speaking with a woman before you who's waiting to get his new book, which oh. comes out on Tuesday. And I was like, I have them here, but I can't sell them to you. Oh, no. <laughs> like legally, you're bound to yep. wait until the day they come out. Um, and so here, opening day. <laughs> yes. Opening yeah. Books. Time. Books come out on a Tuesday, so that's when they will be out. Oh, okay. um, Sigrid Olson. He wrote a lot about the Boundary Waters and the natural area around here. Um, of course, Betsy Bowen, mm -hmm. our children's illustrator and like really local authors. Um, Lorna Landvik, Anger. I just name a lot. Of yeah. Them. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot. So, um, your favorite book. Right now, yes. My favorite book is probably *The Overstory* by Richard Powers. It won the Pulitzer this year. The writing was excellent. Very, just no, no wrong words. What's just, it about? It's about people and trees. It's a novel. It's about. It introduces these nine different people from all over the U.S. and kind of their family story, and then they start overlapping in different ways. And a lot of it takes place in the. Um, the tree sits in the 80s, if you remember, like when people were mm -hmm. sitting up in the redwoods yeah. um, protesting logging, basically. Um, but it's, it, and it has, it goes a lot of other places besides that and up into modern day. So, okay, yeah, hey, it's cool. Really, and it's gotten a lot of buzz. Of course, around here, we're tree people around here. Yes, we are. I like to read about the trees. <laughs> so, yeah. And how many books, I mean, I can guesstimate, but how many books would you say are in here? About Four to five thousand, depending okay. on how packed it is. So a really good selection of books and Yes. We narrow it down for you to the yes. best four to five thousand. Yeah. Which is actually really hard to do. But yeah. yeah. I wish I had more room for kids' books. But um yeah, everything else it's nice to just do small. All right. And then people should definitely come visit at the end of Wisconsin Street. Just keep going till it ends. Yes. You hit the lake you've gone too far. Yes. Go past the donuts. <laughs> go past the donuts. Yeah. Or, you know, go back, you know, go past, grab a book, then go back, and you can read the book while you wait in line for donuts. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Genius <laughs> plan. Don't know why I didn't think of that before. Yeah. And is there a website? Yep. DrewRealianBooks.com. We sell books online and ship them. It's got our events and photos and our, our book picks. And you do have lots of events. We do, yeah. We have them um, almost every other weekend. We have authors come up and read in the store. William Kent Kruger will be here September 21st. He's so popular, we'll probably have to be outside. We can only fit, I fit 50 people in here, although it was tight. But kind of tight, yeah. <laughs> we'll probably have more people than that for his book. So, um, yeah, and we do monthly full moon readings outside around the bonfire at our beachfront. And, yeah, whenever there's a local author that's a book coming out, we have an event. So, yes. So, fun place to be. Think so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. And I lost Lizanne. I don't know. What oh, they're having car trouble. So, oh, you okay. know. All right. Well, we'll shop around in a bit once she gets back in here and narrate that a bit. But thank you very much. Are you a reader? I am a reader. Not all the time, but I am. I do uh, enjoy books when I have time. I'm mostly like a beach reader, like vacation reader, things like that. But I'm, I'm, I'm currently like I'm this Chronicles of a Radical Hag with recipes. I literally just looked at that. I'm like that caught my eye. It was it was it was catchy until I saw like with recipes. I'm like, well, that's even better. <laughs> I also actually have this book. This Which one? The 61 Gems on Highway 61, and I love it. Like, 
Eric and I found so many awesome things to stop on our way up. So I should actually get that because that might inspire it was awesome. some. We actually got it at the uh, Nana Bougie Lodge. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. There's a really cool book and they usually have it here, but let me see. Maybe it's over here. Very cool. Oh, there it is, Downtown Grand Marais. So it shows you pictures of what, and it's written by, I knew this, Eugene Glader. Glader? Glader? Well, it's, yeah, Downtown Grand Marais. This is volume two that you're holding. And it just shows, like, open it up. It's so cool. It shows you what different parcels, like the different properties were yeah. back, you know, when yeah, Grand Marais dates back to the 1800s. Really, the 1930s is when it had its big boom. So, oh my gosh, the yep. Dairy Queen. <laughs> so the Dairy Queen evolved, you know, actually we're... Um, we're standing right now like she just said it used to be a house and then it was a candy store and a few other things and it shows those old pictures and kind of takes you through the different decades wow so this used to be a hotel and now it's like a hair salon that's so crazy oh yeah we're enjoying company we were just enjoying company and that's back when it was tire service see don't you kind of wish it was still that at this moment because your car's having problems I know (laughs) back then yes uh, but then uh, yeah, I bought Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. I also saw that that caught my eye. I was, I was like, I have it. to get that it. It looks so cool. It makes me say, so, Ruth yeah. Bader Ginsburg, she Amelia Earhart, you know, sipping through it. Awesome. And I'm excited to read this with my daughters. That would be awesome. But this section is kind of the historic Minnesota section. So if you're into history, yeah, they got there's some definitely stuff. some that caught my eye that I might need to pick up before I leave town. All right, well, we have book shopped. We've got one more place to hit up, so let's head on out. So now we're heading to the Betsy Bone Gallery. And here's my fun fact. I've never been here. I've never been here. Like, I've never, I mean, I've, I actually, okay, wait. In about 30 seconds, I'm going to show you something. I used to live in that cabin right there, that blue one, little guy, little guy right there. That's so cute. And even though it was like across the street from it, I was unaware that there was an, I mean, it says it right there, Betsy Bowen Studio, but it just never occurred to me to go in there. So I'm kind of excited. This will be the first time I do something in Grand Marais along with you. Nice. It's fun. Literally had no idea this existed. <laughs> so clearly it used to be a church. I'm pretty sure this was actually like the oldest church in all of Grand Marais. Yeah, and I was now, like, is this a church? Yeah. I think I just assumed it was a church when yeah. I lived there and never, Same. you know. <laughs> but it's not, it's an art gallery. It's Betsy Bowen's art gallery. I know who Betsy Bowen is, just never went to her art gallery before. Here we go. Here we are at the Betsy <laughs> Bowen studio. They, um, this is where all the printing is done for the hand made wood blocks that I do. That's my main thing is hand hand carved wood blocks that are printed and often then used for book illustrations over the years. And um, otherwise just f- friendly art for families and people to have in their spaces. Yeah. And uh, so there are and there are some other guests here too. Stefan Hoagland is a jeweler who's been making uh, very imaginative jewelry with local stones and gold and silver for decades here. And then a number of local potters have work here and painters. So the um, the illustrated books that I've worked on. It, are here hmm. and uh, we were admiring and, those a little bit ago. Oh, yes. good, good, yes, yes, and a lot of them are um, either directly about here or mm-hmm. r- related to here or the natural world and some folk tales from around the world. And uh, but related, it's all kind of. It seems to me most of it's just related to. The North Country, which yeah. I'm just quite fond of. I've been here since the 1960s. Okay. Wow. Wow. So it, when I was um, a young teenager was when I first came and then settled in as a 
almost not a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> like 19. Nin yeah. 19. Yeah, that's when you're not quite a teenager, but still in the name, so yeah. you have to go. <laughs> and then, do you know the history of the building? Yes, the building is uh, was built as the Norwegian Lutheran Evangelical Church. And the, in 1903 was when they started using it. And the services were all in Norwegian. Oh, wow for about a whole generation. And then there was also a Swedish church that was up on Maple Hill, five miles away. And that was in Swedish. Oh. And eventually, I gather the, the uh, value of sharing a preacher came up and then I think that's when everything went to English. Mm -hmm. And they just had to get along. <laughs> <laughs> they seem like a pretty peaceful bunch. <laughs> Probably wasn't too hard of a transition. <laughs> so the um, yeah, by then I think you know it was a generation later, and there was more. You know, the community was you know that much more formed, and um, it was a little easier, maybe a little easier to get from five miles away. To town as well, that which wasn't there weren't roads and cars and things mm -hmm. in 1903. Well, there were roads, but um, the church used this building until 1960, and then they moved up the hill to a new and bigger church. And the school then bought had bought the building for a dollar. Oh wow! And used and had, <laughs> there's some good deals. Yeah, <laughs> uh -huh, baby boomer classrooms. Then mm -hmm. they converted the space into the a couple of levels of, of classroom space. Mm -hmm. And then when they were done with that need after this um, current school was built, I guess the there was a local theater company that bought it for more than a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> and but there were for so for thirty five years there were wonderful summer plays and concerts here. Awesome. It was magical. Yeah. It was this tiny little theater that held, you know, eighty to ninety people and oh it was there were these wonderful magical experiences up upstairs. That was the main like the, the church space. Yeah reconfigured and and then i bought it from that group for more than a dollar for more than a dollar <laughs> <laughs> and when did you buy it i bought it in 2002. Okay. okay and now it's all studios it's all creative spaces so there's um my part down here in the basement level and then up above are six more studios there are four studios that are all part of north house folk school Oh, awesome. Um, fellowship program. Cool. So the artisans that have um, an ambition and a particular craft direction in mind can have two years to really explore and take their craft somewhere else. And they live right across the street in another historic house. Oh, that, oh. okay. The, uh -huh, the, yep, four, there's room for four of them. Oh, wow. I love that house. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's Yes, it's got interesting history, too. It goes. It's a lot. It's old and has been re redone a couple times, and then the uh, and then there's a clay studio upstairs and Crosby Bakery, which makes um, right. yummy bread and desserts and treats and things that go to the co-op and the restaurants. Awesome. Have you had any of her I cookies haven't. yet? Ooh, okay. Lemon bars. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, the best baked goods I think I've ever had. I'm definitely right here. Mm -hmm. And I love your ceiling here. I think I Oh my gosh. I know. I was I, I kept looking up it. and I'm like, I bet you a lot of people I don't did. notice that. I, I try to point it out, but I miss out on that sometimes as well. Yes. That's awesome. It's the um I I've done a lot of wood blocks and there they are. That is so I cool. guess they add up. Oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I'm glad I looked up because yes, good. I did. I, I, as I mentioned, as I forget That's to mention. All right. Well, yes. What else can I tell you? That's probably pretty good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good. It's well, yeah. it's 
I don't know, I just I want to look everywhere and see everything. Oh, so I think we're gonna so wander good. a bit. Good, yeah. please. Shop around. Yes, thank you. All right, so here we are. We are at Pincushion Mountain over. What's it's an overlook. It's definitely an overlook. There's a lot of hiking trails, but you know what? We're not going to hike. We're going to literally get out of the car, go five feet, and see the most incredible view of Grim Ray. It is breathtaking. We're going to hop out. Let's go. You want to take pictures? Woo. So to get here, you just take the Gunflint Trail as if you were going on the Gunflint. Well, you're going to be on the Gunflint Trail, like you're going to the Boundary Waters area, but you don't. You stop about mile up, a couple miles up the hill. See a sign that says Pincush Mountain, turn right, and here you are. And here we are. And the Yordis is out on the lake today, quite a ways out there, actually. I can still spot them. It's a windy day today, so they're probably getting some good sailing. Yes. But basically what we are looking at is, you know, his Artist Point, the harbor, and pretty much downtown Grand Marais from couple miles back and mm -hmm. really up high on Pincushion Mountain. Yeah. So if you're ever down in Grand Marais and you look up here, you'll see it and it doesn't even look like it's that big of a hill. No. But when you get up here, you realize it's actually quite a ways up here. That is crazy. It's windy too, so I apologize if the sound kind of just sounds like a bunch of wind. <laughs> where is it? Where is it coming? It's com okay. This way. I can stand. There we go. There we go. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> <laughs> It's a gorgeous day today though. It is absolutely beautiful out. You couldn't really ask for a better day. Couldn't ask for a better first day in Grand Marais. Yep. So this is going to cap off our girls day in Grand Marais. It's only four o'clock so there's a lot more. Did you know, and I find this a very interesting fact, having grown up in the area and then yeah. came back later in life, you could actually bar hop in Grand Marais. I'm not gonna lie, I think I'd done that the first time. <laughs> It was really, it was really something. You but could, get there early because they do close early. Yeah, so Grandma Ray's, which is, used to be the Legion. Yes. Used to close at 10. They don't anymore. Now that they're not the Legion anymore, they can stay open later. Nice. But how we used to do it was since they closed early, but they also had the cheapest drinks, you start there. Nice. <laughs> then you hop over to the Raven or the Gunflint. If, if it's summertime, you go to the... Uh, you know, oh, the upstairs, rooftop. The rooftop yep. yeah. of the Gunflint. And you have yourself some drinks, some live music. Otherwise, we would go to the Raven in the winter because that's like the little one. It's like right next to it. Oh, Have okay. you been there? No. You should check that out. It's really cute. Oh, I got to my list. It, it's basically the Gunflint Tavern. It's just the little thing right next oh, to it. Okay. Same Yeah, I love menu. I love the rooftop, especially in the summertime when it's nice. Yeah. Um, I meet so many cool people there. Yes. It's, especially passing through. And I mean, yes, we're not really passing through, but... I've met some really cool people there. And then after that, cross the street and you're at Voyager. One of my favorites again. And then after that, if you, well, Where else? actually, you know, so that was a couple years ago. I would probably reverse the entire thing now that one, you can go to the Legion now, Grand Marais at night. Yep. I would start at Wonder Bar. I do love Wonder Bar. Cause if you start at Wonder Bar, because that's the only part you'd actually have to drive. Right. So start at you know, Wonder Bar. One person sober drives downtown. Placing, so everybody yep. else starts at Wonder Bar. Then you sober drive downtown. <laughs> park the car for the night. You somewhere go. you can park for the night. There you and go. then do the Legion Gunflint Voyager. Or I also love the upstairs yeah. at Crooked Spoon. Yes. Crooked Spoon now has the upstairs part yes. too. I loved getting a glass of wine there and some appetizers. That does have limited hours. That does. So, like I said, start early. Start okay. early. And, you know, it's a it's a daytime bar hopping town. Exactly. I'm all for day drinking. Yeah. So, you know, we could do that. Um, I don't actually drink, so I would be absolutely no fun. It would just so be you'd me. be. It's okay. You'd it'd be, be me recording cab. you. I'd be the sober driver, and <laughs> you could go. just get no. But I, <laughs> I unfortunately also have something I have to do tonight that came up. So we're not going to go bar hopping, but I'm just putting it out there that if you are up here on your girl's night, yes. there is the opportunity to drink the definitely, night away. Yes, yeah, definitely good options. <laughs> and then, you know, if it's before 10 o'clock, you swing by the liquor store, you buy some, you take it back to your rental or yep. wherever you're staying for the night. Exactly. So I am staying at the Grand Marie House of Light. Um, it is a couple blocks off the main drag and it is 
absolutely stunning. You can tell there is so much love and detail put into this house. Um, the woodwork is just phenomenal and it's, <laughs> it's just, it's just so homey. Um, my boyfriend and I immediately we walked in, we just felt a sense of calmness and it's absolutely wonderful. And we are so excited to stay the weekend there. We are sitting in the vehicle looking at the gorgeous views of Grand Marais from Pincushion Mountain. And I think this is where our day ends. So what'd you think? Oh, it was the perfect day. It was the perfect mix of shopping and exploring. And just honestly, I learned a lot about Grand Marais and the stores in here and the local people. And it just makes me of course, love it even more. Yeah, I know. So it's, it's hard <laughs> to love it more than you did before and then you meet. It, what I love about Graham Ray is the people are really great. They're there wonderful. Amazing, amazing, amazing people in this community. Mm -hmm. And the more you come back, the more you'll recognize them and get to know them. And totally. be like, oh, wait, I understand how this all goes together. And then plus, we, we actually, I didn't plan it this way, but we did end up visiting some of the most like historic buildings in town. I mean, the whole town has a lot of history yes. but got some cool history and and i love i mean i love it of course exploring new places but really learning about the history and how it all ties into town and you're right the people we met today were just outstanding people and i'm so happy that i gotta go along for it all right well this has been a girl's day in grand marais it could have been a guy's day or i mean a guy could have easily have oh, tagged along and had fun totally <laughs> my boyfriend would have loved everything we'd done yeah Fortunately, he's dealing with the car issues, yes. which I'm sure kind of talk fingers, of that. Fingers crossed for him. <laughs> I think some of our conversations on that made its way into the podcast. So if it did, you'll now know they had some car issues. It's getting worked out. Thanks to Cooters. Yes. If you Shout have car out to issues, Cooters. Give them a call if you're up here. And unfortunately, that happens. We recommend Cooters. Um, but yeah, so this is going to wrap up episode 10 of Exploring the North Shore with Lizanne and Jay. Joe will be back next week. Be sure to tune back in. So we're going to be going to two week episodes for a while. So, um, you know, take a week off to binge listen to some of the older episodes. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye. Bye. Bye.